Well, anyway, thank you for having me here. Um, uh, the last time I was in this county and literally in this town was when I was muddy and pretty intoxicated in a field uh, just over yonder a little ways. And uh, so I was real excited to be back here. And I have to tell you, it was an exceptionally uh, emotional thing for me. You know, the transforming event of a generation. Um, my wife was with me. You know, it was just, uh, you know, all these stories that my kids have had to listen to, that she's had to listen to for all these years. And actually being in that spot again was, uh, was a very, very special thing for me. And uh, it looks a little different, you know, it's just, uh, just ever so slightly. All right. I'm irreverent, I'm outspoken, I have opinions, you will hear my opinions, I'll let you know what I think about something, whether I like it, whether I hate it, whatever, you're going to hear about it. I will probably offend somebody at some point during the evening tonight, so I'm going to do it in advance. I'm going to apologize. I am sorry. I'm sorry, 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 okay, I, you know, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not really sorry. Okay. I really don't believe that because I want you to know what I think about things. If I like it, I'm going to let you know it. If you don't like what I'm saying, however, you can blame Diana Weiner, okay? Because this was her idea putting me up in front of this group. Blame it on her, okay? I'm just the messenger. Don't kill the messenger. I have this blog that I used to write called Raven Traven. It wasn't really called that. Uh, but it was given that name by the uh, blogosphere, you know, because I would start to rant about whatever. Was, I never knew what I was going to write. If I was in a good mood, it was happy, joy, joy. If I was in a bad mood, I got really snarky, really mean, and things like that. Raven Traven. So she knew what she was getting into here. You know, I am a known plantaholic. I am. I, you know, there's people, oh, here he comes again. What's he got now? And he grows Oh, he grows them, if it ever comes up here, annuals. Oh my God, he grows annuals? Okay, I can't tell you how often I hear people say at a trade show, at a rare plant sale or something like that, oh, I only plant perennials. That's like, oh God, you must have the most boring garden ever. And, you know, it's just like, come on, guys, you know, annuals, color, pizzazz, oomph, you know, joy. You know, and the next year, you get to start all over again with something new and different and exciting. So we're annual growers, we're, per, we're temperennial growers, tropical growers, and we grow a ton of perennials as well. We grow everything that we like, okay? And if we don't like it, we don't grow it. I am, however, an unrepentant hostophobe. Okay, I just don't get the hosta thing at all, you know, and I have dear friends who are world-class collectors of hosta and they say, oh, look at this. This is the most amazing thing ever. It's like, oh, it's the variegated one. Oh, it's the green one. And as far as I'm concerned, those are the two hostas that exist on the planet. Okay, and the hosta people hate me for this. Oop. Let's see what we got going here. See that battery? There we go. I mean, it's a growing hostophobe. Okay. Diana said, it's going to go great. They're going to love you. This is a great audience, and so far you've been really good. Thank you. Nobody's come at me out of the audience yet. She was right. Well, maybe it's not going to go so great, okay? You know, I have been burned by this kind of audience before. I am not afraid of you. I'm telling you right now, I am not afraid of you. I have the power, and I have the glory. Okay, I have it. All right, I have an admission. I'm a plant geek. That is the first thing that you have to do. You have to admit that you have the problem so that you can recover from this problem. And I have admitted it in front of this group. I suffer from a very bad disease. It is called terminal chad. Okay, whoops, a little too fast. Compulsive horticulture acquisition disease. Anybody else out there have this? Anybody else? Yeah, a lot of you. That's good. That's, that's a good thing. Hi, my name is Lloyd, and we'll start out that way, okay? And this is how we travel. My wife and I travel all over, and we get to see a lot of stuff, and we often travel with Ziploc bags and Sharpies 
and scissors or knives if we're not flying, okay? And you collect things, you get bags, and you bring things home, and you find things. Cardinal rule, never take it without asking. And if they say no, wait till they turn their back, <laughs> okay? Give back, share, okay? But you can see, this is a place that we uh, visited. Uh, I'm hoping we're gonna go back there soon, down in Blacksburg, Virginia, one of the most cataclysmic private gardens you'll ever see. She just has the most wonderful eye for cool plant material. And we were like little kids, you know? And this was, this was I think, before she even woke up. I'm going out there. Uh, it was just an amazing day. I don't think it's a problem, okay? And I don't think any of you out there think it's a problem at all. I don't want the cure, okay? Because the salve for this is just getting more plants. Okay, and that's what we're all about. You know, we're always looking for that fun stuff, that new stuff, that thing that gets your attention next. And it's worked out really, really well for us, uh, for my wife and myself. Uh, in 2005, we were chosen as National Growers of the Year. National Grower of the Year? What? You know, I said, you gotta be kidding me. You have to be confusing us with somebody. You have to. And they said the message was that we want to pass on to the industry in general that a small company can be technologically savvy, have really cool stuff, and do a really great job. It's not about how big your company is. And I thought that was a really good message. You know, it's something that we should, we should all look for. So that's us. You know, don't we look like ourselves, right? Don't we really do look like that. Okay, we all grew up looking at things. What was the question? What's the question you always ask every year when you're getting ready to garden? Somebody. Say again. What should we get? Even more than that, it's what's new. And even more than that, what's different? Okay, that's the important part of it. And so it's not just new because there's a million red petunias coming out every year. God knows there's enough pansies coming out, enough hydrangeas coming out, right? We don't need more of that stuff. What's new? And the key thing is different, okay? And because when you look at it and you start looking at what your grandmothers were growing, the heirloom stuff that's not grown anymore, that's different because consumers simply don't know that stuff anymore. So people are not planting four o'clocks anymore. They're not planting the old Nicotianas that get this tall, or the big tall snapdragons, or, z or a lot of the zinnias, state fair zinnia, and stuff like that. You just don't plant that stuff anymore. Now everything's like a little meatball on a rack. Okay, and, and we've done it, you know, to ourselves because this is what's out there. That's what you see no matter where you go. It doesn't matter whether it's Home Depot, doesn't matter whether it's a really good garden center for the most part, they pretty much have exactly the same thing. So our job is to fight back. Okay, we want to take we want to take the world back and what's new or different. And I'm saying to you, you want to stand out in a crowd. You want to be that property, that garden, that have people stop and say, uh, I, I don't understand what you're doing here. This is really, really nice. Can I, where can I get this? How did you find it? How do I grow it? And now you're socializing. This is what Sullivan Renaissance is really all about. This is what it's about, is building through gardens a sense of community with each other, right? It's really important stuff. So standing out from a crowd. Anybody been to Portland, Oregon? This is Voodoo Donuts, okay? Voodoo Donuts makes donuts. You would expect that. And this is their number one selling donut. They're famous for it. It's shaped like a little zombie doll and it's got, it's filled with this garish red colored jelly and it's got a uh, pretzel sticking out of it. Like, like, you're sticking, like you're sticking pins into a voodoo doll, right? Voodoo Donuts. Voodoo Donuts makes donuts. They have a line standing outside their store in downtown Portland 24 hours a day 
because they have this vibe, this cool factor, this, this joy, this excitement about what they do. I mean, it's the most extraordinary thing that they're doing there. So I'm urging you, stand out. Stand out. <laughs> Did you know that Marilyn Monroe was a gardener? No. You'd have young men gardening if Marilyn Monroe was a known gardener. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay? It is not, however, it is not always good <laughs> to stand out in a crowd. Not always good. So wrong, so many levels, <laughs> unbelievable, but it surely can be. Okay? This is Kent Russell, a dear friend of ours, who actually is known as the Garden Guru. That's his uh, business name. And he obviously had gotten the same memo as these ladies. This was purely by chance. Uh, but that's standing out in a crowd. You know, you got to be unafraid to wear that out in public. And he is unafraid to do that. He is uh, just a great guy and a brilliant designer, by the way. But look at the hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's taking one for the team, isn't it? Man, oh, man, oh, man. That's standing out, though. You'll never forget that picture. Okay, You will never forget this. But look at this. This is a product that, that we're known for. Uh, we've always specialized in growing weird sizes, shapes, configurations of poinsettias, the most common plant on the planet. And we are known for having these real cute, real clever ideas for things to do with them, ranging from gigantic to tiny. So this is a, a little tiny poinsettia that we uh, produced at one point. That's a one-inch pot, okay? And it's actually a little tree form poinsettia, okay? And we sell that wholesale. We're strictly a wholesale company. We were selling that for $4 or something like that. It was obscene. It was just like thievery. <laughs> And the whole point of it was, was that nobody had ever seen anything like it. The retail store would put it right by the cash register. People would come up with their other stuff. Ooh, oh, that's adorable. I'm going to get one of those for my kid's teacher, whatever, whatever the purpose. Oh, I'm having a Christmas party. I'm going to put one on every plate. You know, whatever it is. We don't really care what it is. We're trying to find cool stuff for you to do with it. Okay, we made living wreaths of poinsettias. Okay, living wreaths. And uh, we thought they were really cool. And uh, so did somebody else, OK? So this is uh, on a TV show, uh, on a set, uh, decorated a little bit. And uh, lo and behold, you know, it gets my face on uh, worldwide TV several times as a guest on the Martha Stewart show. And we did her set one year for Christmas. Jackie Ivanko, the little kid you know, with the big voice, was singing all, all day long. It's like, oh my god, please stop. And, uh, but it, you know, enough already, you know. It was cool. Uh, I love Martha. She's a genius. She's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I would not want her angry at me. Um, but, you know, we get along really, really, really well, okay? The key thing is just being pretty is not enough. Just a pretty flower does not cut it anymore. You need more than that. We're talking about the conjunction of beauty and function, okay? A plant for us, before we will introduce it, before we'll put it out on the market, must have multiple functions, multiple uses, multiple benefits that we can identify, or we simply do not put it on the market. A pretty flower is background noise, in particular, to millennials. It's background noise. They don't even know it's there. They're not interested. They want to eat it. They want to smell it. They want to smoke it. They want to distill it. They want to make makeup with it or a dye or something. They want to make fiber with it. There, you know, there's a million things you can do with plants. They need more than just one thing, and that pretty flower is not enough. So it's that that joining together of beauty and function that is really, really, really critical for it for anything that we're looking for. And I want to show you an example of that. We have emotional and physical rewards that we're looking for on it, OK? So here's an example. This is real life example of exactly what I'm talking about. 
This is the single district in Amsterdam. It's a canal system where all the barges on it are all flower shops and stuff like that. If you go to Amsterdam, make sure you go to the single. Okay, and I'm walking down the, the uh, side street there and I see this gigantic planter. These things are like four feet across. Okay, beautiful. What are they doing there? Okay, why are they there? I start to walk around it and I'm starting to say, what are they doing? What's it there for? It's a urinal on the street in Amsterdam. Awesome, okay? That's what it's there for. Beauty, function, all right? All right, this is how we do it in America. Yeah, <laughs> not quite the same thing, is it? No, uh-uh, we don't get it here. We just don't get it. All right. So here's a gratuitous garden picture. You know, I got to show you some garden pictures, and I picked it because it's got lots of hostas in it, and I happen to love this particular garden. But here's the reality, though. Woo, red, white, and blue. God, that's so inventive, isn't it? Who ever thought of that? This is the classic PVC combo: petunia, verbena, calibricoa. PVC. Who sells more PVC than anybody on the planet? Home Depot, exactly. So why would you do this? Why? There's so many choices out there. Oh, Home Depot, red, white, and blue. Oh, it's lovely. And then you get to look at this. This plant is protected from problematic aphids, Wi-Fi beetles, mealybugs, and other unwanted pests by neonicotinoids. Okay, what is that saying to you? I'm poison. That's what it's saying to you. I'm sorry. I'm not going there. Not my way to do things. Philadelphia Flower Shop. We do uh, the lion's share of the forcing for the Philadelphia Flower Shop. Uh, Diana and her husband are, were also involved with this for a long time. And we learned everything we know fr from John, actually. This is the entrance of the show last year, okay? And all those plants and flowers were grown. Uh, a lot of those uh, things were grown by us uh, for the, just for this show. And you can see the scale of it. You guys have been to the Philadelphia Flower Show, a bunch of you, I'm sure. If you haven't, go. Make it your business. It's the world's oldest and largest flower show, uh, indoor flower show. Okay, nothing like it. That's 50 feet high. All right, so it gives you a sense of scale. This is the Calder exhibit, all dried flowers. Come on, there we go. I'll just blow through this really fast. This is what we have to do it in under these conditions in the dead of winter. That's a $2,000 rare Korean rhododendron. I am so glad it made it to the show. That's the conditions we do it in. We have to deliver it to the show in these conditions. And that's what it looks like inside the greenhouse. Pretty cool, you know, to be able to do that. Three weeks before the show, I'm going nuts. I'm seeing this stuff just coming out of the ground. I say, we're not gonna make it, we're not gonna make it, we're not gonna make it. Three weeks later, this is what they looked like. Pretty neat, pretty neat in the dead of winter, right? Oh, come on. And I'm just going to click through a bunch of these. A stilbies, blueberries in the dead of winter, our famous begonias, hydrangeas. Somebody asked us, can you make a succulent wreath for us? And uh, we put one of our employees on it, and they just cranked this thing out in a, in a couple of hours. Beautiful, beautiful. OK, now remember this. This was the front entrance to the show. This is Monday morning, same view. Oh. Uh, not quite as elegant, is it? No. Okay, cool factors. Let's talk about cool factor real quick here. It's a battle for garden domination. It is. It's a real battle out there. We used to just fight each other. Okay, you know, I like my garden better than your garden or things like that, right? You know, you don't know. It's tough. It's, it's brutal. Okay, the gnomes, the flamingos, the geese, you know, all this stuff, right? It's terrible, okay? A lot of mayhem, a lot of death going on, you know. <laughs> These guys, they're, they're relentless. They keep coming back, okay? You know, yeah, you know, I'm telling you, it's tough. It's really tough. Now, it's not just that. It's, uh, it's us, you know, the people like us, against Godzilla and Megalodon, okay? So here we got Godzilla. This is Home Depot. This is you know, Megalodon, this is Lowe's and Walmart, you know, so we're, it's like, it's brutal, okay? Doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way. This is where you go, hmm, 
namaste off my lawn, please. <laughs> namaste off my lawn. Okay, Peace Tree Farm, our website. That's as close as I'm coming to advertising. I want to give a shout out to my wife over there. She is my inspiration, my muse. She's the one who keeps me going. We've been married, we're going on 39 years married now. Oh my God. It has been 12 of the best years of my life. I have, not in order, you know, not in order. We have a few good years and then, well, we won't get into that in front of all these people. We do love to travel. We, we, we find things. We meet cool people. Candy always gravitates towards these people. And she just, it's, you know, it's just wherever she goes, okay? Let's talk about the wow spot. This is what I want to talk about. Every garden needs a wow spot. Everyone, preferably more than one. Something that makes you stop dead and go, oh, wow, wow, okay? That's a real wow spot, but this is a wow spot too. Okay, this was for a trade show, and this was a horse trough. It's just lettuce. That's all it is. Okay, and it's arranged in a swirl. You can do this. You can all do this. And you put something like that at the edge of your property leading up to it. You don't think people are going to stop and say something to you about that? Of course. When it gets too big, what do you do? You cut it and eat it. Okay, it's double, double dipping here. So wow, here's some wow spots. This is at a garden center in Washington. Isn't that great? People come from all over to see this thing. Oop, come on. World's largest hanging basket, 16 and a half feet across. Full-size trees and shrubs in this thing. Incredible, unbelievable. This is the road strip at a garden center in Buffalo, New York. That guy cares, okay? He really cares. I like people who think like that. Here's a couple of my wow spots. I love this photograph. This is. Uh, a Styrax at Longwood Gardens looking over one of the ponds. Pretty cool. Using light and shadow. In the description of my talk, we were talking about motion and texture, light and dark and things like that. <sighs> Be still my heart. Oh my God, is that not the most ethereal thing? Just, it's just gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. This is at Chanticleer. This is somebody's backyard. Look at the light and the dark. Longwood. And of course you have all these tasty little bits on the plants. Get up really close. Get down on your back. Look up at flowers. Crawl in the dirt. Check it out. You know, what a creation we work with every day. Thunbergia mysorensis, a tropical vine. Allium flowers. You ever get that close up to them? Check them out. Really cool stuff. You know, furniture. This was a lawn set that was being thrown out. You know, you can do this. You can find this stuff. Decorating with food. <laughs> the Dallas Arboretum. Cool, isn't it? The roof of that palapa is a satellite dish. Okay, you drive around here, I guarantee you, you're going to find abandoned satellite dishes by the, you know, in, in trailers, to, you know, abandoned trailers and stuff like that. Decorating with food. The conservatory at Longwood Gardens. Those are all apples. Okay, all apples. Very cool. This is somebody you want to listen to. This is a person who you need to have speak here. For the, uh, it is a topic that is perfect for this foundation, for the Sullivan Renaissance, with your foodscaping and your edibles program. She is leading the fight. She is a genius at talking about this, and she's just a wonderful person. Okay, this is a front yard in Chicago. Every plant in there except for the tree is edible. Everything. Looks beautiful to me. Our greenhouse. And here's some quick, real, real quick, because I know I'm running down on time now. Some new breeding, stuff that you're going to see real, real, real soon. This is a cabbage. Okay, isn't that beautiful? That's a kale. That's lovely. A tomato. That's like a jewel. 
Okay, that is just the coolest thing ever. Another tomato. Yeah, really neat. That's a cucumber. Mm hmm. A cucumber. Basil. Okay, if you want pollinators in your yard, if you want to attract bees, honeybees, any kind of bee you want, plant basil. This one happens to be a Thai basil. African blue basil will be absolutely covered with honeybees all summer long. All summer long. You, I'm telling you, it's like a, they will, like a missile coming for it. And here's some heirloom veggies that we're, that we're working with. This is, any Italians out there? Anybody? You ever hear of punterelle? Okay, this is an Italian heirloom from Sicily. And you have to, you have to say it correctly. You have to move. Punterelle. Punterelle. That's how you have to do it. It's a chicory. Isn't that beautiful? You break those little heads off and you braise them out. Mustard. Black leaf mustard. This will take a, a hard winter freeze. This will look beautiful in your garden into January. Tastes great. Rumex sorrel. This is raspberry dressing sorrel, a dead hardy perennial here. No question about it being perennial for you. Gorgeous plant. Okay, we have events in our greenhouses. We have farm to table dinners right before the flower show. This is this year's table setting, 72 people. Okay, we have local farmers that donate food for this event. Um, this is what we grew for the event. We were literally cutting the salads and plating them right there in front of the people. Uh, we're doing it in primitive conditions in the greenhouse, of course, you know, but it's ethereal at night. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? You know, it's a really cool event. It's a benefit. So what we're really here for is the passion. Isn't that crazy? Okay, this is in uh, uh, Catalonia in Spain. And the nanas there are like obsessed with geraniums, obviously. Oh, I put this in there. That's my wow spot. That's my dog and um, her serene highness. Uh, but she, you know, she just loves spending time in the greenhouse with it. So again, you know, closing out here. Sometimes it's a garden. Okay. Who's been to Chanticleer? Where is that? Wayne, Pennsylvania. Seriously, who, none of you have been to Chanticleer. You need to put a bus together to go to Chanticleer. Seriously, the finest public garden in North America, by far. It's only open in the summertime. It is magnificent, and it will look completely different next year. Completely different. Uh, it is magnificent. Just a great, great, great garden. First time Candy went to Chanticleer, she cried. It's that good. Okay, and she's seen a lot of gardens. Okay, this is Dan Heim's personal garden, Terra Nova Nursery. Sometimes it's just a spot in a garden. This is our backyard at the farm. Okay, and it's just like, wow, that looks pretty good. One of my favorite private gardens on the whole planet, down near us. And I just love this raceway that they've turned into a garden element. Sometimes it's just one plant. That's a geranium. That's Caroline citrine. Isn't that beautiful? Also the most difficult plant to grow you will ever run across in your life. So they never look that good. This is my homage to Woodstock. This is a plant that we're bringing to market. This is a farfugium. And the name of that that we've given it is wavy gravy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as a homage to the hog farm from here. It's very cool. Sometimes it's just a flower. Wow. That's a dahlia, believe it or not. And a butylon that we brought to the market called Biltmore Ball Gown. We collected it from the Biltmore Estate. Salvia oxifora. Isn't that cool? Great plant. Sometimes it's just the leaves of the plant. There's that farfugium again. This stopped me in my tracks the first time I saw it. It's a stachys. A begonia. Never seen that color on a begonia before. 
And I can tell you, size does not matter. I'm telling you that, I'll repeat it again. Size does not matter. It's all about the composition and the color and the, and the way it makes you feel. But I can tell you, that's not it, okay? This is in uh, Niagara Falls, New York. This is, wow. Okay, that's all perennials, all hookerellas, annuals. I mean, this stuff is just ethereal. Isn't that great? So, I'm closing now. I hope I inspired you. I hope I made you think. I hope I got you excited that spring is finally, finally, finally here. I understand you had a lot of snow at the end of the season like we did. And I urge you, get outside of what you're used to doing. Think about it differently. Try something unexpected. But get out there and garden, please. Thank you so much. I so appreciate this. Do we have time for questions at all? Or anything like that? Anybody have a quick question? I'm sorry. Where's Longwood? Longwood Gardens is in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, uh, almost on the Delaware border. Uh, it is the premier botanical garden in North America. It's huge. Uh, it's a, a part of the DuPont, it's actually the Longwood Foundation now, but it was uh, the DuPont family's estate. And it is just amazing. Just an amazing, amazing, amazing place. Ma'am. I have a lot of problems with the deer eating anything I grow. If I have any suggestions? Well, there are there's many, many lists of plants that the deer won't eat. Uh, lavender is one of them. Um, you know, there's a lot of plants that deer don't like. And uh, there's an author, Ruth Rogers Clausen, who has an entire book on deer-resistant plants. And actually, Cornell Extension will have that say, uh, a very good list as well. So it's a problem for everybody, you know, unless you have a fence. All the way in the back. Where are we located? We're at the very northern tip of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. So we're about an hour and 20 minutes due north of Philly, almost right on the Delaware River. So, ma'am. And, and the other part of that, and that's absolutely correct, and to expand on that just a little bit, there's almost no plant a deer won't try. Okay, I mean seriously. You know, they'll try. So we've got hookera, which they're supposed to not go for, that every single leaf on those is nipped off. Okay, literally they'll yank them right out of the ground. Um, so, you know, there's nothing that is deer proof except maybe daffodils. You know, they will not eat a daffodil. Uh, and there's a couple other things that they just won't eat. Digitalis. Yeah, so. So, and, any other questions? And uh, we will be around uh, for the whole event, so you can catch us outside uh, uh, at the reception and all of that. Again, thank you very, very much.